A 6.6 magnitude earthquake with its epicenter 40 kilometers southeast of the Afghan town of Jhurm in Hindu Kush mountain range just reached the triples in India. In fact, uh, I'm speaking to Mr. Frank Hugobitz, who's the researcher, and uh, he has been able to predict earthquakes and I wouldn't just call them predictions, but accurate predictions. One of his videos posted earlier spoke about the lunar and planetary connections of how some seismic activity might occur in the Hindu Kush region. So thank you so much for joining us on India Today. Do tell us uh, about uh, the prediction in this particular scenario as uh, a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake did hit uh, the areas of Afghanistan, but the ripples were felt in India as well. Yes, <clears throat> based on the planetary and lunar geometry, I estimated uh, around mid six magnitude around the 22nd, and uh, this 6.5, 6.6 in the Hindu Kush region occurred later on the 21st, uh, practically at the exact time of the new moon. And this is not just because of the new moon, but because the new moon converged with a planetary conjunction, in this case it was the Sun, uh, Mercury and Jupiter, and I explained that in detail also in the forecast, when a new moon converges with critical planetary positions and also with a full moon like on February 6, then we can have larger seismic activity. Certainly, but what is the science behind this prediction, uh, Mr. Frank? Because a lot of people are curious as to how your predictions are accurate. Well, uh, first of all, I do not believe that this is uh, based on the gravitational pull. Um, many scientists around the world uh, continue to refer to the uh, gravitational pull as the main uh, influence of the planets, but I disagree. And uh, the geometry that we have been studying at our institute in the last nine years uh, actually, um, well, hints to electromagnetic force between the planets, uh, which makes a lot more sense. And uh, so we analyzed the planetary positions and uh, we developed the SGI graph so we can see instantly when it is probably more critical uh, at a certain time. So in the last forecast, we said around the 22nd and that was based on the, the planetary and lunar geometry. And uh, again, we think that the electromagnetic force is the most critical uh, influence between the planets and the moon. You also mentioned that uh, after this prediction of an earthquake or some seismic activity near the Hindu Kush region, you're going to get another uh, tag from Twitter itself because constantly we have been seeing how your Twitter feeds have been tagged by Twitter as uh, these predictions not being scientific or there being no scientific evidence to look at the possibility of predictions of earthquakes. <clears throat> yes, uh, the, in the last two days, uh, those tags uh, have not appeared. Um, uh, I've, it's really been kind of a battle. Uh, I maintain that uh, there is no scientific research into uh, the positions of the planets at the time of large earthquakes. They claim that seismologists in the last couple of decades have done uh, research, including planetary geometry, but this is not true. At least they have not carefully studied the positions of the planets at the time of large earthquakes. And I maintain this because in the last 10 years, I have never seen a scientific study actually trying to uh, uh, well uh, prove whether or not planetary positions are are influential. So they can say that, that, that scientists have done this research, but the truth is they have not done the research. And uh, the SGOS, my institute, we have been doing the research in the last nine years and we know what we are doing. And uh, if it would not be scientific, if it would not be true what we are claiming, we wouldn't be doing the research and we, we would not have spent the last 10 years uh, doing this research. Well, absolutely, sir. But uh, would you say that uh, in each of these predictions, you look at largely how the planetary uh, systems move and how they connect with the Earth's atmospheric, at, uh, you know, movements at that point of time? Or uh, do you say that this is also part of how the sun influences the planetary movements across the galaxy? Uh, well, the planets move around the sun. Without the sun, there would there would be no planets, and it would also there would be no life on Earth, of course. Uh, but the planets themselves, when they reach critical positions, uh, then apparently they generate electromagnetic energy that affects Earth's crust. 
And when there is a larger fault section in the world where there is a critical amount of stress, then that will be triggered. <clears throat> this is because nature always tries to restore balance. So if there is a fault section with extreme amount of stress, then the dynamics of the solar system are also involved in neutralizing the stress. Well, uh, that was easily uh, explained by you, sir, but we'd also like to know if you have any other forecasts for earthquakes in the Indian subcontinent region near Afghanistan or Pakistan in the near future. <clears throat> well, we rely on uh, atmospheric fluctuations. They work sort of, they're not very precise, but uh, they are uh, rough estimates and we, we monitor that uh, daily. So uh, as soon as we have an indicator for uh, potential larger seismic activity in, uh, in Asia, uh, around the Himalayan mountains, India, etc., uh, then of course we publish that so that people will know in time. Right, so, so has there been any sort of prediction going forward? Because we just saw a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake in Afghanistan. And uh, of course, we are also awaiting whether there could be aftershocks of this particular earthquake that could last for days. Uh, <clears throat> probably not because it was a 6.5, 6.6. It is a, a moderate strong earthquake. It was also very deep. And usually these kind uh, of earthquakes, they do not really trigger um, aftershocks, not many anyway. Um, in a worst case scenario, I'd say uh, it could be a foreshock, but there's no way to know uh, until a main shock occurs. But in this case, based on the planetary and lunar geometry, I don't expect uh, a major earthquake anytime soon. But of course, I could be wrong. This is just our estimate. So lastly, uh, your critics again are very active on social media and they do say once again that there is no scientific basis for earthquake prediction. Having said that, I will say that each time that I've spoken to you, you have been able to bring forward the analysis and the science behind predicting where the next seismic activity is going to occur, how frequent it's going to be and what's it going to be in terms of the magnitude as well. A message to your critics, sir. Sorry, could you repeat uh, the question? Uh, so I would like to ask you again that despite the fact that your critics do not agree with the kind of research that you do on earthquake prediction, every time that we've spoken, you've been able to predict seismic activity and also the magnitude at which these earthquakes will occur with almost uh, precise uh, level of uh, predictions and precisement. So would you like to give a message to these critics? <clears throat> yes, uh, the, it is very interesting because the specific planetary geometry can tell us a lot about the potential of larger earthquakes, whether it's going to be uh, in a magnitude 6 or a magnitude 7. Uh, it is not always correct. We do estimates, but uh, specific planets are much more dangerous or much more critical than other planets. So we can do fair estimates in this respect. And sir, uh, I would like to thank you for speaking to us uh, on India Today once again and uh, live and exclusive. That is uh, Mr. Frank Hugobeets, who's the Dutch researcher. He was the one who predicted the devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria. He was also the one to have predicted the seismic activity in the region of Hindu Kush. And also going forward, uh, listen, uh, listening uh, to planetary movements, Mr. Frank is able to bring out predictions of earthquakes, which are many times criticized by other researchers as they say there is no basis to the scientific prediction of earthquakes. Mr. Frank Hugovitz, thank you so much once again for joining us on India Today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir.